Today is the feast day of, I believe it's called Our Lady of Chestahova, which is a wood and canvas painting of the, of the Madonna holding the baby out for us to see. Uh, holding the baby out to us to, I guess, to worship. And the baby Jesus is holding his right hand up in the gesture of blessing, two fingers up and that, and holding, I believe it's the Gospels in his left hand. Today is also the feast of St. Mary of Jesus Crucified. She was born, I believe, in Galilee and died in Jerusalem. She, uh, she, she had 11 brothers, I believe, who died in, in childbirth. And she was the first girl and the only one to survive. Her parents died at two. She's raised by her uncle. He arranges a marriage for her at 13. She refuses and wants to be in the religious life. He, um, in retribution, punishment, sends her to be a servant in the nastiest job he could find for her. While she's there, this Muslim boy, guy, male, tries to convert her by pretending to be her friend. Again, again, Islam, allowed to lie to you to save their own neck. If they're captured, they can lie. If we're captured, we, are, we refuse to renounce our faith and we end up getting martyred. So that's interesting. Who's, who's, which is more noble? Which is more admirable? To lie, which is one of the commandments, which they presumably, and they're allowed to lie to you to trick you. And that's what happens in, also, I should say, in government where Muslims will ally alliance with you for say against abortion or something, but it's only to get their means, not not for, not for the good of the uh, the country they're living in, or at least generally, not always. Hopefully, it is here. Anyway, so he, she says, I won't turn, become a Muslim. He slits her throat. She somehow survives. She dies, but Mary revives her. The Virgin Mary revives her. She goes into the religious life. She has supernatural events. She has a stigmata. She levitates. She had 40 days of, of um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, fighting the possession of a demon from her, I guess from her, trying to possess her. Uh, the order that she goes to says you can't stay here because you're just a little too much. She joins another, I believe it's the Carmels, Carmelites, and um, becomes a, uh, what is it when you're, I think a cloister. I think that's where they, you pretty much have a shut-in. I think that's what cloister is. You don't go out into the community, you stay and pray. Um, she does that. She has a uh, gift of prophecy, gift of... Uh, recognition of conscience, I believe, is what they called it. Uh, but in spite of all those, the stigmata she receives, in spite of all those things, and she has illnesses, she ends up dying of gangrene while working to build a church in Jerusalem, uh, which was kind of sad. And she dies at 33 years old, which is well, not an uncommon, but it, it is a theme. And we do know who died at 33 years old. Anyway, uh, but she had a great devotion to the Holy Spirit, even correspond, uh, yeah, corresponding with the, with the Pope at the time that he needed to um, focus on the Holy Spirit in his talks more. Um, yesterday we had family over, and we had a lovely time right here where I'm sitting, and it was funny because we had people from out of state. My wife and I are conservative. My kids, one could care less and one is, is, is a product of the uh, public school system. In other words, believes all the liberal nonsense that's going on in the world. Um, and uh, 
So the people from out of state wore a political shirt talking about she did this so she sat on the bus so that she could do this so that Kamala could be running uh, for office or whatever. And I'll be honest, they were they were telling the husband. Okay, I'm not. I don't. I never mention names unless someone says I can, and I never ask, so I don't. Anyway. One of them was giving stories of past family history and was had it seeming had the room and uh, enthralled and was seemed to be having a good time remembering uh, past happy days in the early life of, of our blended family here. And so I never really thought anything. I, I looked at his, his face and watched how he seemed happy and, and, and his wife's were happy and whatever and the kids were running around with all the other children. And I never, after they had left, someone, my wife said, did you notice the shirts they were wearing? And I said, no, I didn't notice. I never, all I saw was their faces. I didn't see their shoes. I didn't know if they were wearing shorts or pants, whatever. What I, I never noticed the shirts at all, which is unusual for me. Anyway, never noticed. So, and I was wearing a Got Jesus t-shirt only because I had it on in the morning because the family members I was with were Christian and I was just going to be putting up a tent, helping put up a tent and maybe doing a little bit of chores and then I was going to change into some other clothes. They never did change. Anyway, so, yeah, I just think that that, the whole thing is, is kind of silly. I'm not voting for anyone because they're a woman, because they're a Catholic, because they're a Jew, because they're um, a French-speaking uh, person. For any reason except that they're the best candidate to take care, to help govern and lead our country and keep us safe. That's the reason I'm going to choose a candidate. Not for some superficial reason because she's a woman, he's gay, she, he, he, whatever, is uh, an atheist or whatever silly reason. None of those things are going to matter. Now, a true Christian, a true Catholic, should not forego his principles like President Biden does. He's not a true Catholic, sorry. He forgoes his principles in public. It's one thing for me to do stuff in private where only some people, if, I mean, if I were to do stuff, that's one thing. But when you're the president and you're saying out in public, I'm Catholic, I'm Catholic, and I can believe in abortion. I'm Catholic, and I, and I think socialism or socialistic ideas and moving us towards socialism is a good idea. When you can say that, socialism will never work together with religion because socialism wants to be your father, wants to be your daddy, wants to be, they want to be God, the government. And that's never going to work with freedom of religion ultimately. And if you simply look at history, you'd know that. So anyway, I'm going all over the place with this. Now I don't even know where I was. So, um, ah, sweat beat. Uh, so anyway, that that happened they they wore these political shirts anyway so i'm not going to vote for someone just because of that seems a little somehow that seems a little racist or sexist i'm voting for a woman because she's not a man or because she's a woman which means she's not a man that just seems like the kind of the dumbest reason and let's be honest it's the truth is kamala harris or kamala or whatever you want to call her has done nothing to give us any indication that she's that she's going to be good for this job unless you want socialist agendas and now back to this kamala kamala whatever <sighs> calling her name not the way it said is not ra okay it isn't always racist i suppose it could be but when i say i just say whatever if it's kamala or kamala it's whatever happened to come out of my mouth i don't really care what race and I'm not talking about that that's not the issue I also call Shia LaBeouf Shia LaBeouf whatever his name is it's there's another there's a bunch of people whose names I didn't really quite a, have a grip on pronouncing so sometimes saying a word is just saying a word it's everything you say and do is not always racist is my point so uh 
if you want to make something out of it, fine. But in my head, oh, there's one of those finch, right? The yellow bird. If you want to make something out of it, fine. But that's on you. It's not on me. I don't call Kamala or Kamala or whatever it is, anything for any reason other than whatever floats out of my mouth. It's not a racist thing. So sorry, you can take your, your woke tears, Miss Kamala, and just keep them, whatever. So let's ask the, uh, this was supposed to be short. <sighs> let's ask the Holy, Spirit. let's ask the saints to pray for us. Let's pray for the souls in purgatory. And oh, there he is. Now he's gone again. Pray the souls in purgatory and pray for conversion of the Americas. Uh, Our Lady of Chestahova, pray for us. St. Mary of Jesus Crucified, pray for us.